like this man that we see on or hear on the radio every day that we see on the internet that we see on our tv screens that we see on the red carpets this is not who he's this is not who he really is. Charlemagne the God is one of the most hated radio hosts in America's history, especially when people look at how he talks to guests on The Breakfast Club. But Charlemagne has a dark past that should be at the forefront of why he is disliked in the industry. Today, we're uncovering the truth about what happened to Jessica Reed, a woman who bravely came forward disclosing horrific details of a night she had with him. After further research into her story and seeing how traumatized she remains to this day, it becomes important to expose the truth about how Charlemagne shattered this poor girl's life. They took me upstairs in the bathroom and then they closed the door behind them. They were in the bathroom with me. And so I had one person over here holding me up and then the other person over here holding me up, Larry and Boo. And um, that's when they... Uh, um, that's when they just started getting physical with me um, and touching on me. Charlemagne meets Jessica. Jessica Reed was a 15-year-old girl when she met Charlemagne through her friend, Rico. After the meeting, they exchanged contacts and Charlemagne started to show interest in her. She turned him down because she was just 15 and he was 20, so he claimed. Jessica said he stopped showing romantic interest in her after she denied him and said they remained platonic friends. Jessica and Charlemagne went out a lot together, but always with friends. It was never a solo date. She eventually started trusting Charlemagne and started to feel like they were siblings because he treated her as such, only if she knew what was ahead. The first question would be, why is Charlemagne hanging out with a 15-year-old high school student? What exactly are you discussing with a 15-year-old as an adult? But in 2001, not many people had questions, as Charlemagne and Jessica continued to blossom in their friendship. Then on June 9, 2001, Charlemagne invited her to her birthday party. And although Jessica never really wanted to go, she was pressured. And that was where things turned ugly. The party. I think I was like 20. I was 20 years old. My cousin had just graduated from... um high school and he had got a scholarship to Penn State University and I had a party and I had all of these chicks at a party like I was doing overnights at the I was working at Z93 then so I had all these chicks there that I met through radio and you know chicks that my dudes had known right? Jessica Reed attended the party with her sister-in-law at the time when they got to the house, she was uncomfortable because of the presence of so many men. It seemed like a sausage fest with a sprinkle of girls here and there. But since she was already there and likely didn't want to ruin Charlemagne's night, Jessica stayed. Charlemagne asked Jessica if she wanted a drink. She refused at first, but he kept on insisting. She gave in when the pressure got too much, and Charlemagne prepared the drinks for her and her friend. After her sister-in-law finished her drink, she immediately started vomiting. Jessica apparently had only drank half her cup and tried to stand up, but instead collapsed to the ground, unable to move her limbs. In a state of intoxication, Jessica heard Charlemagne laugh and say, take her ass upstairs. The girl's drinks were spiked with something called Spanish fly, and Charlemagne even spoke about it in an interview, admitting what he did to their drinks. Hey, I'm Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I got this girl real drunk, and um, I it sounds a little fishy. I, I got her drunk. I, 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 I didn't just get drunk. I remember going, I, I went to the sex store and got Spanish fly. Oh, so you raped her? Shut up. <laughs> Spanish fly. You in, they sell it in the sex store. You, I, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Although Jessica couldn't move, she still knew what was going on and knew that she was in an upstairs bathroom. There were two men holding her up and began to grope and penetrate her with their hands. After they had done what they wanted with her, she ended up in a bed. Charlemagne walked into the room and took her clothes off and then also took advantage of her. When does, um, so the men are, are coming in and out. When does Charlemagne, were you assaulted by anybody else besides Larry and Boo that night? Besides Larry, Boo, and Charlemagne? Anybody no. else? So when did Charlemagne, did he enter the bathroom? Did he enter the room? So what happened? He did, um, he came into the bathroom and um, he picked me up. Jessica's sister-in-law finally found her, and they went outside and sat on the porch. When they got outside, there was a car full of guys who asked if they were okay and let the girls use their phone. Jessica's friend called Jessica's mother, and then EMS, who came and took her in an ambulance. A kit was used when her and her sister were in the hospital, but no DNA was found. When it came time to press charges, Jessica would have to testify in court. 
She never followed through with the case because Jessica's mother didn't want to stress her daughter further and told her not to testify. Sullivan, and I am the mother of Jessica Nicole Reed. We are out here in Mount's Corner, just left the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department speaking with detectives. The case of McCalvey, my daughter, Jessica Reed. I have regrets in which I am very sorry about because when my daughter was drugged and raped, I wanted to do any, nothing but protect her. I didn't want her to suffer anymore. I didn't want her to feel that pain anymore. And so I did not let her testify. Mm -hmm. And because of that, today we are finding out that Mr. McCalvey is going to get away with what he did to my daughter, Jessica, and this family. Jessica Reed filed a police report from the night of the incident that pointed the blame to Charlemagne, but no further investigation was done. Years later, she would try to reopen the case, but it would not work. Charlemagne's story. In situations like this, many people don't want to hear the perpetrator side of the story, but Charlemagne has been so loud about the case, claiming innocence every chance he gets. So here's his side. According to Charlemagne, he left the party at some point. Then when he got back, he heard that Jessica, who he claimed to have met at the party, got drunk and was trying to set things in the house on fire. He was throwing a party for his cousin who had gotten a scholarship. Upon returning, he heard that his cousin violated Jessica and he had been arrested. Charlemagne claimed to have gone to the police station to look for his cousin, but when he couldn't find him there, he took the blame for everything that happened. Charlemagne then claimed that the detectives he spoke with asked him how he got alcohol when he was just 20, and he claimed that a crackhead got it for him. He was hit with a case of criminal conduct with a minor, and he claimed to have gotten probation for four to five months. After digging into the case, there are so many lapses in Charlemagne's story, and we will be addressing them all. The Lies When the incident happened, it was 2001. Charlemagne claimed to be 20 at the time, but the radio host was born in 1978. When we do a little math, 2001 minus 1978 is 23. So Charlemagne was actually 22, going on 23 when this incident happened. There was no way detectives would have asked Charlemagne how he got alcohol since he was old enough to purchase it. The difference is you were a child and he was an adult male. Right. Not, not 18, not 19, not 20, not 21, but 22 years old. He claimed to have organized the party for his cousin, who received the scholarship, but he told Jessica that it was a birthday party. Charlemagne's birthday is actually June 29th, but he told Jessica it was June 9th. Charlemagne also claimed that when he got back to the party, he heard about what Jessica was doing in the house after she got drunk. He immediately went to the police. He said she was never violated, but then goes ahead and drives to the police station to bail his cousin, who he thought was charged with the crime. The reality of the situation is, Jessica filed a police report which allowed them to go into the house and retrieve her bracelet. They found a hole she punched in the wall where the incident occurred. There was no other evidence of Jessica doing damage to the house or lighting anything on fire. So at the end of the day, Charlemagne didn't walk into the police station because he was being a good friend and trying to bail out his cousin. He went there because Jessica had reported him for the crime. Charlemagne then went on to claim that the case was thrown out because there was not enough evidence. However, this is not exactly true either, because Jessica's mother would not let her testify in court, so they dropped the case. She was trying to protect her daughter from further harm to her mental health and having to relive the moment. That never happened. Exonerated means you, you were determined by the state of South Carolina that you did not rape Jessica Reed. Oh, that never happened. That never happened. That never happened. You took a plea deal for a lesser charge because her mother sent her away yeah. and did not cooperate right. with the authorities. But them, them people did not let you go because they knew that you were the one responsible for you being in that position. Yeah. Why wasn't any of the guys in the car responsible that came that day? It was you. Charlemagne pleaded guilty with no contest so he could get a lighter sentence. And then he also lied about the amount of time he was on papers. He said he was given four months of probation, but it was actually three years. Oh, ain't got no one for me. I just told the detective, like, hey, look, 
I take full responsibility for anything that ever happened that happened in the house last night. So two weeks later, they come and arrest me for a criminal. So I had to get blood and hair follicles. Oh, oh, you going down there to initially explain it? They ain't had nobody else. They depended on. So being that I went down there and took full responsibility, huh? Lock him up. Charlemagne's story is filled with so many lies and gaps, it's ridiculous. He's painting his own narrative and changing details of the night to make himself look innocent and also make Jessica's details of the night seem false. Where's Jessica Reed now? Miss Reed has been using her social media platforms to share her story and seek justice for what she's faced. Around two years ago, she opened up about the case in a three hour documentary. It's evident that something happened between the two that night, and Jessica's trauma still remains. If she's lying, Charlemagne could have slammed her with a lawsuit, declaring defamation and claiming his innocence. But that's not what happened. If he brought this case back to court, he risks implicating himself further and every other man that made Jessica suffer on that night in 2001. Since the case has been public for a while now, many people have questioned why Charlemagne still has a successful career. He doesn't seem remorseful about the situation and continues to paint Jessica as some sort of delusional liar. But that's a question that nobody can answer honestly. Over Charl 20 years has passed since Jessica was violated by Charlemagne. So unfortunately, she can no longer file a criminal case. The only thing she can do is share her story to more people and try to educate women of her learned lessons. Younger women should take note of this incident, and we need to teach the youth about the terrible things that happen to kids out in the party scene. Anyone with a daughter can feel her pain and the horror she endured. We hope Jessica Reed's story is able to encourage more people to step forward if they're experiencing situations like this or know someone who is. We were shocked to hear about this horrible story and the fact that it has been widely looked over and basically dismissed. What do you think about Charlemagne? Do you believe he's innocent of the charges, or do you feel that he got away without justice being served? The reality is, things like this are constantly happening in the entertainment industry, and it is disgusting, and we just hope more people will help each other avoid ever having to experience such an awful event in their lives. We hope you share this video with as many people as you know to spread more awareness. We pray for Jessica and her family, and believe that karmic debt will be paid one way or another. If you enjoy our content, check out these other videos. Thanks for staying to the end, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more hip-hop news and rap content. And as always, we will see you in the next one.